Hello everyone, welcome to Chillopedia, this is Maxim. Today we will be working on one of the most productive exercises for string crossings. It is published in the Zauer Klingenberg Cello Method, Volume 3, number 218. In case you don't have this music, you can download it for free following the link in the description to this video. This exercise consists of various bowing patterns. You just play on three different strings and you will use different bowings for each exercise. We will do it step by step. I will show you every part of this exercise, each bowing pattern, and then I'll play those measures for you through so you can follow me if needed. No matter what kind of bowing we will be using, you will need to pay a lot of the attention to flexibility of your wrist. That will help you to change the angle of the bow moving from string to string. When you start on lower string, G or C, you have to aim your bow closer to yourself, to the right side, roughly aiming it in between of those two corners of the cello. And then when you will be moving to higher strings, you will gradually need to change the angle. So once you play on A string, that your bow will have this position, right in between those two corners. And you can see that there is quite a significant difference between the bow position when we need to play on lower strings and the bow position when we have to play on top two strings. And if it's not clear, that's perfectly fine. We will learn it by doing. This is why first few bowings patterns are fairly easy and then it will get more and more complicated. So you can test your skills playing simple bowings and gradually making it more and more difficult. Okay, let's play. Now, the first measure, you have to play three notes per bow, moving from G string to A string. I'm using the whole bow, that means each note gets one third of the bow, and I'm changing the angle right away after G string to D string to A string. The second measure you'll play with the same pattern, just three notes per bow, but you will start from the C string. Now I will play for you first two measures repeating it as marked. In the second line, the bowing is two down, one up. Here you just have to make sure that you pay attention to the bow distribution. If you use too much bow for two notes and too little for the third note, you will quickly get stuck in the upper part of the bow with no bow to use. The solution is to pay attention that you are not using too much of the bow for first two notes. 
because you'll have to spend equal amount of the bow when you play down first two notes and up bow the third note. And we will stay in the middle part of the bow as suggested. It will look like this. And here's the third measure of that line when you start on the C string. Make sure when you play up bow, you have a little bit lighter touch between the bow and the string. Otherwise, the third note will sound too loud. Your goal is to balance the volume of all three notes. And now I'll play for you the second line as printed. You are still here, you didn't switch to a different channel. That means that you might be interested to go deeper in the cello technique and explore my courses I offer on Udemy. You'll get a chance to explore number of cello etudes and some of very interesting solo pieces, including the famous G major suite by Johann Sebastian Bach. If you want to explore those courses, and get a special Chalopedia discount, check out the link in the description. And next four measures, starting from the beginning of the third line, will push our bow distribution skill to the next level. Here we'll have to use three notes down and just one note up, yet using the same part of the bow, staying in the middle part of the bow. It will work like this. And then two measures later, when you start on the C string. Remember keeping your right wrist flexible because you are in control of all minute changes of the bow angle. You miscalculate it and you will hear sound which will not make you happy. Here are those four measures starting from the beginning of the third line. Let's keep going. Next four measures, starting from the second measure of the fourth line, give us an opportunity to play just two notes per bow. However, you can start it down bow, like this. And then up bow. And when you have to play up bow, you have to stay at the tip. Starting down bow and staying in the middle part will be a bit easier, so why don't I play those four measures for you? 
starting from the second measure of the fourth line. <laughs> next step playing up bow and staying at the tip when you play at the tip it's crucially important to turn your wrist slightly towards index finger when you play at the tip the most active fingers are index and middle fingers they will do most of the work it will remind you the way how violinists are playing almost without using pinky so again, at the tip, your wrist has to turn a little bit this way. Next four measure, starting from the last measure of the line five, we keep playing at the tip. But this time the bowing pattern is more complicated. Two notes slurred, two separate. <laughs> And this is how it will work. All together, I will play for you starting from the last measure of the fifth line. In the next four measures, in the seventh line, you will have to play groups of six notes. That's basically a variation of uh, what we did before, and it will sound this way. As you see, there are also two options. This was the top bowings option, and let me just play using this kind of bowings through those four measures. And the second option to play this line number seven is more complicated. You have to play two notes slurred followed by another two notes slurred and then two separate notes. You still stay at the tip. Make sure that right before you start playing, you feel the perfect contact between the bow and the string. If 
if a shoulder got tired, in the next line we will get a chance to relax. And in the next four measures we'll have to play using fairly simple pattern. Two notes slurred, two notes separate. Here are those four measures starting from the beginning of the line eight. <laughs> Just two more exercises, we are almost there. And in that following pattern you will have to use the whole bow. You will need to play four notes per bow with the exception of the first two notes. I will play for you through those four measures right away, starting from the second measure of the line 9. <laughs> And finally, the last part of this very long and intense exercise. By the way, don't forget to ask me questions. So please write them down in the comment section. I will be very happy to answer. And maybe some of you will get even better ideas. And this way you will be in touch not just with me, but everyone in Chelopedia community all over the world. Last eight measures. We we'll have to play just one note per bow. It seems to be a fairly easy task, but you'll have to get back to the upper part of the bow. And the bow stroke you will be using is actually martelle. That means that each bow stroke will have to start with little accent. You have to articulate each note as clear as you can by using your index finger as active as possible. And I would suggest you to practice just the first measure using this bow stroke over and over again. And it will work this way. And once you get used to that, you can play it through. Last eight measures of this exercise. If you played all those exercises with me, you are cello hero. Make sure you share your experience via comments to this video.
And again, if you are curious, please feel free to explore Cellopedia courses on Udemy. And at any rate, I'm sure I will see you on Cellopedia again. Stay happy and keep playing cello.